In crafting the world of Middle-earth, Tolkien left many mysteries, both significant and minor, without clear answers. Some of these gaps might have been unintentional, overlooked in the vastness of his creation. Yet, as Tolkien himself has indicated, certain mysteries were intentional. One can almost imagine him, from wherever he might be now, watching with amusement and thinking, they've been puzzling over these riddles for seven decades. Hello everyone and welcome to Middle Earth Tales. I am Dragon. Today, I'm going to cover 10 mysteries that Tolkien left us with, whether by design or oversight. Given the depth and intrigue of these topics, they warrant their own dedicated video. So for now, I'll simply introduce these enigmas and save the detailed discussions and theories for upcoming videos. Number 1. The Greatest Mystery of All Tom Bombadil The sheer number of theories surrounding him surpasses those of all other enigmas on this list combined. Tom Bombadil stands as the ultimate riddle of Middle-earth, unmatched in his mystique. Tolkien's genius shines in how he wove this character into The Lord of the Rings. The dialogues centered around him are so captivating that while engrossed in the pages, you might momentarily believe you've deciphered the essence of Tom Bombadil, yet, just as quickly, you come to see that Tolkien, rather than unveiling the truth, is only deepening the enigma. And it's clear from various hints that this was a conscious choice by the author. I can't help but imagine Tolkien enjoying the endless debates about Tom Bombadil, perhaps chuckling to himself throughout his years. Not only is Tom Bombadil the most puzzling figure, but he's also the most talked about. Given the extensive discussions and theories about him, I'm gearing up to produce a dedicated video that compiles all these insights. Number 2. Ungoliant Breaking down Tolkien's celestial beings is typically clear-cut. We have the Ainur, and those who descended to Arda are distinguished as either Valar or Maiar. Every one of these entities, Balrogs included, can be classified into one of these categories. But there are outliers that defy this classification, and Ungoliant, taking the shape of a colossal spider, is one such exception. Her might is undeniable, having posed a formidable challenge to even Melkor. Had it not been for the intervention of the Balrogs, she might have triumphed over him. Yet the essence of Ungoliant remains shrouded in mystery. Some say she emerged from the shadows into the world. But what is she? A manifestation of this darkness, a spill from the void that surrounds the world, or perhaps a spirit from the timeless halls? Let me throw in a fresh theory right now. In one hypothesis, Tom Bombadil is purported to be a manifestation of Arda itself, the planet on which Middle-earth resides. So, could Ungoliant possibly be a manifestation of this world's darker side? It's all open to interpretation. Number 3. Where are the Entwives? The mystery of the Entwives and Ent children is one that has puzzled many. Where could they have vanished to? Why is there no trace of them? No mention in human songs. And even the elves, with their penchant for chronicling, seem clueless about their fate. The simple answer to all these questions is, we truly don't know. What we do understand is that there was a divergence in preferences between the male and female Ents. While the male Ents cherished trees and vast forests, the Ent wives had a fondness for gardens, blooming flowers, and nurturing vegetables. This disparity in passions led them on separate paths, resulting in the enigmatic absence of the Ent wives. Here's a comforting thought to muse over. The Vala Yavana was the creator of the Ents, much like Aule was the craftsman behind the dwarves. Perhaps the Ent wives, feeling a pull towards their creator, journeyed to the Undying Lands. There, under the loving gaze of Yavana, who held them dear, they might be tending to the most exquisite flowers in the gardens of Lorien. What a heartwarming notion, isn't it? Number 4. The True Identities of the Nazguls The Nazgul pivotal figures of the Third Age, and undeniably captivating in their own dark way, 
are shrouded in mystery. While we're privy to a wealth of details about their actions and roles as ringwraiths, their origins remain elusive. Who exactly were these nine men? From which corners of Middle-earth did they emerge? What kingdoms or territories did they oversee or influence before their transformation? What made them particularly appealing to Sauron? Were there any internal dynamics or rivalries among them? These questions remain unanswered. Our understanding is clouded. With only fragments to guide us, they were individuals of great power, some hailed from Black Numenor, and among them was an Easterling king named Kamul. But what roles did they play in their homelands after being ensnared by the rings? Why is there a conspicuous absence of elven accounts detailing the events surrounding their descent into darkness? These aspects continue to be sources of intrigue. Number 5. What are the nameless things? One particular enigma, when compared to the rest, tends to linger subtly in the backdrop. Truthfully, until the Hobbit movie's debut, it barely garnered any spotlight. But post-movie, its intrigue surged. Gandalf's words paint a vague picture. Creatures unknown even to Sauron, dwelling in depths unreachable by dwarves, ceaselessly gnawing at the world's foundation. Beyond this, details are scant. It's curious why Tolkien chose to weave this tidbit into Gandalf's narrative of his clash with the Balrog. Given Tolkien's methodical approach, he was known to ruminate on concepts extensively. It wasn't uncommon for him to mull over an idea for months, sometimes years, before finalizing it. So, the sudden introduction of a seemingly unexplored element into The Lord of the Rings feels uncharacteristic. It's almost as if Tolkien is playfully challenging us, presenting a riddle. I've endeavored to shed light on this mystery in a dedicated video. Those curious are welcome to dive in. Number 6. Watcher in the Water Another enigma, akin to the nameless things, is the Watcher in the Water. It's almost as if both sprang from a similar creative seed. Yet, the Watcher holds a more pronounced role in the narrative. At the very least, its appearance and habitat are known to us. It's clear that Tolkien introduced this entity to seal off the Fellowship's retreat once they ventured into Moria. Still, it would have been enriching if he had delved deeper into its origins, its sustenance in that seemingly limited pond, and its broader significance. Even Gandalf, who had a vague idea about the nameless things, didn't know what this creature was. I've crafted a dedicated video exploring its mysteries, which you're welcome to explore. Number 7. How do orcs multiply? One of the biggest mysteries of Middle-earth is the love life of orcs. The existence of female orcs, or even the notion of orcish offspring, is largely uncharted territory. The movies further muddy the waters with their portrayal of Saruman birthing orcs from the earth. Tolkien, in one of his letters, did hint that orcs procreate similarly to the elves from whom they descended, yet this claim lacks concrete backing within the main texts. The Hobbit does fleetingly allude to Gollum preying on young orcs, but given the numerous revisions and inconsistencies between The Hobbit and Tolkien's later works, it's hard to take this as definitive proof. My personal take? Tolkien might have deliberately shrouded this aspect of orcish love life in mystery. Number 8. Blue Wizards This is one of my favorites. Tolkien sent five wizards to Middle-earth, and three of them are missing. Let's first talk about the first two. They are close friends. They are known as the Blue Wizards because they wear blue robes. All we truly know is that they journeyed to the east and vanished from the annals of Middle-earth. While Tolkien's main works don't shed further light on their fate, one of his letters does hint at their activities. He suggests they might have stayed in the east, establishing a secret cult. Yet, he prefaces this with, I fear, indicating his own uncertainty. Another theory posits that they might have succumbed to Sauron's influence, but if that were true, such potent beings would surely have left a more pronounced mark on subsequent events. Or perhaps, 
in the vastness and unpredictability of Middle-earth, they met their end. The truth remains one of Tolkien's most captivating mysteries. Number 9. Where is Radagast? Of the five wizards, Radagast's fate is another intriguing enigma. While Gandalf returned triumphant and Saruman met his demise, the paths of the blue wizards remain clouded in uncertainty. Radagast, however, presents a unique puzzle. The last known account of him places him in conversation with Gandalf. We're aware he successfully relayed Gandalf's message using his affinity with animals. Yet, post this task, he seems to have vanished into thin air. A visit to his abode, Rosegobel, revealed it to be deserted, with no trace of the brown wizard. So, what became of Radagast? Was he ensnared by Sauron or his minions? Given the proximity of Rosgabel to Dol Guldur, it's plausible that Mordor's forces might have targeted him during the War of the Ring. But like many facets of Tolkien's world, Radagast's fate remains a tantalizing unknown. Number 10. Where are the dragons? We know that Smaug wasn't the last dragon in Middle-earth, he was the last known or seen in Middle-earth, but the dragon lineage didn't end with him. Going back to the beginning, dragons were creations of Melkor. Over time, their numbers grew, but many died during the War of Wrath. However, some managed to escape and came to the far north of Middle-earth. They even engaged in battles with the dwarves living there, leading to the dwarves' dragons' war. The dwarves fled from the area, and later, one of them came south. But what happened to the others that remained in the north? Their deaths seem unlikely. They might have moved even further north, but why none ever came south again is unknown. And this is the last mystery I will talk about today. Please mention in the comments any that I haven't covered in this video. If you liked this video, you might consider subscribing to the channel. At least a like would be much appreciated. Until we meet again, take care and farewell.